what it was. You know, these guys, these Florida guys, he's signed tight down here. Yeah. Uh, all I see is. I, I, I was out. Was that good? Perfect. The camera facing the right way. Yeah, face the camera the other way. No, all I see is black from his feet. You guys see us? I'm literally watching your live right now. There we go. Hello. Whoa, what do you think about that? What well, the beer? No, the feed. It's shitty. All right, dude. I think we're all right. It's gonna be yeah. I mean, it's gonna be what it is. I mean, we're in a bar. Join in, guys. Understood. We're locked and loaded. Yes, but blurry. Yes, but blurry. Oh, that is an ugly face. It's <laughs> on. Testies, testies. Let's you see this guy. Are we live? They are. We're good. How's, oh. how's your teeth? Can you hear me? <laughs> what did you say? Four, three, two, one. Peter yeah, Month Club. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Are, are we live? Are we, we good? Are. We're live. Yeah, we're, we're live. live. Oh, sorry, that's my sorry. point. Excuse Ladies me. and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Listen, Jason Patton. What's going on? Fire man? Department Chronicles. Guys, Jeremy and Rob, National Fire Radio. Here we are, man. Yeah. You almost forgot that that key introduction. Yeah. Jamie from National Fire Radio. I don't... Pennington does that. You and Pennington yeah. do that. That's and a... How did you get an English accent whenever you do that? Because uh, I'm an idiot and I don't know how to do accents properly. <laughs> I can do Arnold's and, and uh, you know, Russian. I actually have a question for you. What made you have such a strong sexual attraction to apparatus? Because I've never seen someone describe, like, you describe a new, like, hey, Jay from National Jeremy, Radio. I have this, by the We're, way. Uh, <laughs> so we just found this new, uh, this innovation. It's called stairs. You, like, walk on them and you go places. But when you say it, you're just like, oh, God, well, stairs. Jay and one of the big things that why we feel so passionate about it is we actually get to ride fire apparatus. Wow. 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 We're, we're, Wait, no, ladies I'm and gentlemen, sorry. we're 30, so we're 30 <laughs> seconds into this interview right now, no. and I just got crapped on by Rob. Thanks, buddy. God, yeah, you're such, such, such a great Rob, person. I mean, yeah, the, guy no. flew, the guy flew all the way from the No, no, it's and fine. Oh, that's that's fine. Listen, I'm I drove sorry. I drove an engine once. It was awesome. They let me, like, honk the horn and stuff. It was, <laughs> it was <laughs> probably one of the greatest days of my life, to be no, honest. That was hilarious. That was, that was not a fair first hit. I'm, listen, I'm going to answer that question, but I first have to go here. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks of for course. coming all the way up from Florida, Jersey, <laughs> rocking the table, yeah. coming all the way up. But I mean, like, here's the thing, right? Like, this is what this is all about. And tonight, our National Fire Radio on tap launch party, Nick Papa, who's off camera. We're going to get him on camera in a minute. This guy's a rock star. We want to start showing off the talent in this industry through brotherhood events just like this. And Love for it. you to come all the way up from Florida, you and I hit it off a couple times back and forth. We messed around at FDIC. Wow, that sounds weird. No, yeah. <laughs> we shot some... Wait, it, what? it wasn't weird for me. I can no, say right. no, all no. my viewers over there. Yes, <laughs> that is gross. Typical Friday night. But we, <laughs> listen, that I, uh, MSA party was off the hook. Right, we'll get back to that in a minute. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that's what, that's what this is all about. And so I'm, I'm honored tonight to start this and launch this tonight. We have incredible people here. And we're going to be doing this all night. We're going to be going live all night with this party. Um, thank you for coming in. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm just excited. No, no. I, I, first time I met you, man, or I saw your stuff, I was really impressed with what you're doing. I think it's awesome. Not a lot of people, you know, show the apparatus or sh just have the passion. You know, screw the apparatus, screw everything else, but just the passion that you guys have, I think, is really awesome. And, and speaking of passion, Nick, can you just like one of these cameras, just show us that mustache right there? I mean, get th get that. Look, just look. Oh. Ah, no. ah, that curl. It's the curl at the yeah, end. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, the thickness is nice. It is, but you can get thickness, but it's the curl that makes it's cool. Is it curls for the girls? That's what it is. You married? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> wife hates it. That's all right. Pretty standard. Then. <laughs> yeah, but that's a thing, right? They all do. Absolutely. I say November is the lowest attraction rate for any women to men because everyone's growing their stash. People say, Jason, why don't you grow yours? Because if I grew a mustache, it would look like I picked little kids up in a van. It's just not good. <laughs> Gingers already look weird. And then you throw a stash in there and it's just bad for everybody. So oh, the, half, the half crescent window panel van. Yeah. Cruising, oh, yeah. Cruising yeah. Around 
Free candy. Yeah, yeah, free right. candy for, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, your parents yeah. were in an accident. Yeah. My name's Jason. I'm here to pick you up and take you to your parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I work for the fire department. Yeah. I had this conversation with my kids the other day, and I go, listen, I go, my kids, like, my, my daughters love puppies. And so I'm like, listen, do not, whatever you do, when the guy rolls up and goes, I lost my puppy, yeah. my daughter literally would be like, cool, where are we going? Let's go. I'll help you. I'll make posters. Yeah. I'll jump. I'm like, no, 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 man. Yeah. No posters. No social. I'll call the police for you. Uh, yeah. I'll call the police. Yeah, that's but I want to tell you a story. You were talking about your, your fun Friday nights, right? We were talking about meeting and having a joke about that. Yeah. Last weekend, we were out in uh, Harris, or two weeks ago, we were out at the Harrisburg Show in Pennsylvania. We're selling product, and uh, we're selling T-shirts and hats, and we're meeting people, and it's just unbelievable the amount of people that believe in our process and yeah. what we're doing here. And so that's the validation that we look for all the time. And this one guy's off to the side, and I'm talking to everybody, and I look over, and I'm like, brother, you look like you need a T-shirt. He's like, I'd love one. I said, we got everything. How about this? How about a solid brother's hat? He goes, I'll do a solid brother hat. And he nice. goes, you know, because solid brother is like solid brother things. And I go... <laughs> What? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, what's up, my man? Oh, like, yeah, all right, I got it. I get That's it now. Awesome, Good, yeah. yeah, different structure with different folks. I get yeah. it. But it was absolutely, it totally caught me off guard. Did he dog. say just like that? Though? Absolutely. Like, yeah, I even solid brother yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and he like, give me a little wink, and I'm like, out the door. And chubby chaser, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> That's good stuff. So, oh my God. I, I want to ask this to kind of go back because a, a lot of us have started following you early on back mm -hmm. when he, you had the old name. Yep. Can we talk about the old name? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, a, so the, the, the National Geographic's firefighting. Yeah, so National Geographic's fire, fire Department, Department edition. Right. We I started that off because the first video was. Uh, hunting for the battalion chief and the, like right. how like the bigger their belly gets the more gnarly they are and then you gotta look for the mustache that kind of thing but um Some no we didn't can relate to that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the way it goes so, no i start the videos and start doing we're hunting for all these different people well national geographics actually reached out to me they sent me a cease and desist letter they were like oh, burn everything that you have like you should <laughs> erase every video everything <laughs> yeah yeah like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah throw yourself off a building um so but i actually ended up talking to them about it and they were like you know what your symbol's different like you're actually good you're covered under parody law so you can yeah, continue right. doing exactly. what you're doing yeah without a doubt and i was like oh, i'm gonna change my name just in case i actually do do something with this you're not so gonna who, try to take it from so me who so who came up with the spelling of chronicles so uh uh <laughs> <laughs> you know that not just a lot of people. I figured I'd no, just throw that out there. Swear, it's spelled right, but it's that one thing. So if you haven't noticed, I, if you, thought, I was the one who hit <laughs> that one fair hit tonight. <laughs> Jesus, Jeremy. So That's if great. if you go on our site on the Facebook page, when you look at the banner, it's uh, Fire Department Coffee and Fire Department Chronicles together. And when I originally had my first Fire Department Chronicle, the girl spelled it Chronicals. I got it. I got so it. Uh, I just left it up there. I was like, screw it, let's go. The rest of our merchandise is spelled properly. Well, but yeah. where I figured, you know, I'm leave it Jason, there. I got a, like a similar story that happened to me. Um, I'm an ordained minister in New York State. <laughs> I married uh, two of my friends. And, um, Can you believe that? He's actually spitting that out right yeah, now? Yeah, it's a whole lot of Ladies and it, gentlemen, let's just let's address some issues right it's now. It's going to get so much worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you guys need a minister the, for a wedding or anything. Yeah, He's available. National right Fire Radio. It's the next thing we're going to get uh, underway here. National Fire Radio Chapel. I mean, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, so I end up um, filling out the, the marriage license and somebody was like making a, a bad joke about, oh, wouldn't it be funny if the date was 666? And I started, like, I unconsciously wrote that down as a date for uh, on one of the spots. So they rejected the marriage license and sent it back. I had to send a letter on my letterhead. And I'm like, I don't have, I did this online. Yeah. So I, no. I'm like, all right. So quickly, I'm like half, like uh, Reverend Robert Lee, whatever. <laughs> and it was in the name section on the, the MacBook document. So it didn't autocorrect it or like no spelling error came up. So I am the Reverend. <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> because it came up wrong. So I'm the Reverend. How about the fact Robert that you put Lee, the like, devil on somebody's marriage license? Yeah. No, it sounds like you should be yeah. in a Snoop Dogg commercial yeah. or movie or something like I that. I think you should. Uh, I mean, the jury's one, out on whether that one number was right or not. So, one wedding I mean, and done. No. I, have an, time. I have an off question for you guys. Shoot. Why does New York keep sending all the old people to Florida? Every single one of them. We're heaven's Income waiting room right we now because keep, of you guys. We yeah. got to keep your ambulance busy. Every, yeah. Oh my God. Every, like, not, the whole like, you got to take me to the father's hospital because that's where my doctor goes. Right. That's how they all, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. I, Thank I got you. It. What, so, um, well, let's just, yeah, yeah it's, it's what happens down listen, there. Listen, the North, the, we don't have seasons anymore up here. We have summer and we have winter. We yep. went from, we went from four, like three, four weeks ago having 30 degree weather to my kids were, we were swimming this weekend in the pool. Jesus. I mean, that's how quick it goes, right? So, like, we don't have the seasons anymore. And so 
a lot of the older people, like my parents are getting up there in age too. They're looking, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. And, um, you know, I can't blame them. But, I mean, we sent them down there just to get them out of our hair. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much for that. I really appreciate that. And we've convinced some Florida man as a, uh, a, a, a tourist attraction. So. <laughs> <laughs> when, yeah, look, Florida, at least you have two, winter, or two uh, you know, seasons. But Florida, we have summer. Hotter summer, colder summer, summer. Yeah, but, and it's but 900 have, degrees. In those communities, right? Everybody goes to bed at 5, right? Yes. Door, the streets are empty at 5. Yes. Um, shoplifting is on the rise, and so are venereal diseases, right? Uh, yeah, the so, number one, yeah. like, fun fact, the number one rising rate of sexual, sexually right. transmitted diseases is in 55 above communities. Absolutely, because some dude comes walking in there at 56 years old. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, I'm cleaning house. I, I have Viagra. Out. Let's <laughs> go yep. for this. Let's, Let's game time. They gave me a little Cialis, yep. and this thing's, uh, and maybe with a little, like, this thing's uh, rising better. Better than cousin, the tower ladder. Let's go. Cousin Vinny or like Bronx the, Tale, like you know, the, the vision's in my brain. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, well, you know, Viagra actually started off as a blood pressure medication, right? Right. Yeah. That was the original. Mm -hmm. Guy walks in, he's like, "I'm having the greatest side effects ever," and <laughs> now everyone has herpes. So that's, yeah. that's pretty much the way that it's went. A gift that keeps on giving. It is. It's amazing. I that agree. and being a reverend. So yeah. what are we doing here? <laughs> what are, let's let's get back on track a little bit. What are we doing here? Right? We're talking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, right? I mean, let's, let's get back on track a little bit. I mean, please, Jeremy. We are please. Live. The fact that people actually want to, I mean, we have seven people watching us right now, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, this is uh, okay. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, like, I just want to get back on track for a minute. You know, we get we get a lot of attention and a lot of negative, negative attention, too. And you do as well. Yes. Right? And so I just want to hit on this a little bit. And I don't, I don't like to give the haters much love, but I love giving them my love because... Uh -huh. I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's important to talk about in the job, in, in the fire service. And, you know, we're trying different things. We're trying to put a, a new face on the industry. We're trying to, um, I don't know, better the job, just our way and how we know how to do it. You do it through humor yeah. and your fun. Yep. We do it through showcasing uh, stories like guys like Nick Papa and yourself and mm -hmm. talking about careers and capturing stories and culture and tradition. Yep. And we hit the apparatus stuff, you know. And, and so on. So, like, I know that you've had your battles. Yeah. And, and we have, and we're going through some now with some guys and, you know, and so on. But I, I just want to talk about that for half a second. And I think how important it is, is that when you're new and doing something new for the industry, mm -hmm. you're a target. Oh, at 100%. And I actually, I, I really agree with, and I think it's awesome what you're doing, like moving the classroom outside of the classroom. I think sure. it's a great thing because firefighters want to learn. They want to learn new stuff. They want to learn new techniques. They want to hear stories, you know, because you don't get into firefighting or EMS or police, being a police officer, first response in general. You don't do that if you don't want to help the people around you and expand your mind, so on and so forth. So I think this is very important to do stuff like this. But you're 100% right. If you, the new people are always the targets. I mean, the person who said, you know, what a Galileo said that the, the uh, earth was round. Yeah. And everyone was like, you're out of your freaking mind. Right. So anyone who starts with a new idea is always going to be crapped on immediately. And I, and I think where you, where you hit on that too, which I think is super important, is part of the on tap party. And I call it a party. I mean, it's an event. It's an event space. It's a party. Yeah. We're doing, you know, we're doing, we're talking shop. Yep. But we're also promoting the brotherhood. And I think what, what I've come to learn is that, you know, we're not the first ones to do anything like this by any means. There are plenty... That means I need a beer. Yes, sir. I was, try, I was trying not to go on the mic. Can fake, I have a beer, fake please? News. I'll yeah. Fake news. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I think where I'm going with this, and wh what I just want to hit on real quick, is that you know sometimes when you take the lead and you try to blaze the trail and do a couple yep. different things in the industry, you get a lot of pushback. But yes. we also find that we get tremendous validation and support. And I think what's important is we're not the first ones to roll out this on tap. Mm -mm process there's tactics on taps there's brotherhood and brews there's like there's different groups and and i support them and follow them 110 percent i think anybody that's willing to do something for, on the bigger end to make this job better yes we win right my thing is this what we're trying to do with on tap and having you here and a bunch of other guys are going to be coming in today uh instagram guys and so on national fire radio is a social media platform so are you mm, yeah exactly right i mean this is where this is where we live and dwell and, and we're learning and how to navigate it and so on but i think what's important too is what we bring to the fire service in making it more today if i can get a couple guys to come do a lecture tonight because it's at a beer hall or an event space where we're having bagpipes and socializing yep. and brotherhood and storytelling then we win 
Yes. Right? We win. And you know what? Uh, a lot of people don't want to embrace social media, but social media is the future. You either it's, embrace it or- It's not going or, away. Or, it, right. 100%, You're going to be left behind if you it, don't. 100%. And, and I totally 100% agree with you. I, I, I did a keynote speech a couple of weeks ago, and that was one of the first things I talked about. Thank you, buddy. You're good, bro. Uh, you're, you're, you're amazing. Good. God. You know, this is the other thing we talk about. Brotherhood, you know? Yeah. Well, Eddie. Eddie. No, but guy. That I talked about how if- you know, if you want to change the way that the industry looks at a new training technique or something like that, you have to break. You have to blaze new trails, and a lot of times that's going to test the fr the who you are as a person. You know, right. who, you, who you've designed yourself to be up to this point. So you have to be that person, and I think what you're doing is is 100 correct. I think it's but, great. But it, thank you. But mm -hmm. I, it doesn't work unless we get other guys to subscribe to it and yes. believe in it. Yes. And mm -hmm. and part of what we're trying to do is guys like Nick Papa. I mean, this guy is putting his trust in us to have him here tonight. We saw him. Let's talk about this, Rob. We yeah. saw him up in New England Fools. New England Fools up in Maine. Uh, we we uh, we walked in and you know. I see this guy. Who's like, he's got an awesome mustache, so this better be good. <laughs> and then he he gets up and he just he delivers. It was a rock star. He, I mean, he's sitting there. He's like, oh, and yeah, that ego stroking, huh? Nick's just sitting I, off camera, like, I, yeah, I'll take it. I love uh, the part because he's got it up on the screen. It says venting tactically, and he's like, I hate that word. Like, <laughs> and he like just spends a couple minutes talking about how he doesn't like the word, and he just starts nailing into ventilation. And it's something Jeremy touched on was that we don't talk about going to the roof anymore. Yeah. And what I liked about his class is he talked about going to the roof, but he explained the why behind it. We sat, we were, thank you very much. We sat in, uh, we were down at Pierce. Pierce invited us out to the factory and we okay. sat, uh, we went out to dinner one night with a major metropolitan city in the yeah. Southwest. And we're out to dinner with them and we're talking about culture, firehouse culture. <laughs> we're talking about how they run, what they do, this and that. And I had a truck boss with 35 years in go, yeah, we don't go to the roof. We don't go to the roof. We don't go to the it's roof not, in Florida. It's not, even a, it's not even a thought. We don't go to the roof in Florida, but I'll say this. Like, I like the fact that he doesn't, or, you know, he's explaining his roof tactics, why he does. If you are going to have a belief or you're going to have a training technique, have reasons and, and, and bullet points behind why you do it or don't do it. Say, I don't do it because of these reasons. Right. A lot of people will just say, I don't do that because I don't like it. Or I don't do that because, uh, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy told me, like, no, have mm -hmm. reasons behind why you're, or why you're not doing it. Because then I'll actually believe in what you're telling me so right. i like that that he's you know however he believes that yes or no well why there's reasons nick, would you mind hopping it. in hop yeah. in so we're yeah. gonna get nick pop on i'm gonna step out for a few minutes yeah. nick hop in brother have a seat introduce yourself rob introduce me yeah i'm pretty sure i shouldn't have been the one that stayed but no, no, all right, no, you're right. You're fine. <laughs> this is great you're over. That's yeah <laughs> that's right yeah. all right everybody it's, it, so so we've got nick papa here with us and nick's gonna start kind of going into his uh into his class a little bit without giving away too much of the farm but Nick, uh, thanks for being here first and foremost. So, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We're um, just push the microphone a little bit closer. It's like is, is that good? music too loud? But uh, so, Nick, how did you get to this spot of where you came up with the program? Like, what was your aha moment where you were like, "Hey, like something's missing here," and I think I got a way to fill the gap. So I took a really good question, and the genesis of this program really came about. So I did. Uh, before I got promoted, I spent almost half my time split between the engine and the truck. Obviously started on the engine first, like most, slid the floor after a couple of years. And after I went to the truck, right off the bat, we, we hit a good tear of fires and they, were, and they were good fires. Most of them were second alarm fires. And the thing was, I had learned a lot of lessons the hard way, unfortunately. Right. Um, and it didn't, a bunch of those lessons didn't occur to me in that moment as there was a mistake made or things could have been done better. It wasn't until I got promoted and our department sent us to a officer development program for two weeks. And we had George Healy from the FDNY who is one of the you know, principal advisors for the UL uh, uh, fire burns that were occurring at Governor's Island. So he was going through and explaining a lot of the data predominantly on ventilation and when I'm sitting there, I had that light bulb epiphany moment where I was just, I just kind of spaced out and started going through in my brain these fires that I had gone to where we had some close calls or things kind of went sideways or didn't go the, the way we exactly planned them to go. And a couple of them were directly as a result of some decisions that I had made. I thought I was doing the right thing based on what I was taught in, in proby school and what, you know, the general principles of what I was taught, but I was missing a couple key components in the actual application of it. Right. So in theory, I thought I was doing the right thing, but there was a couple critical pieces that were missed. 
So I was thinking to myself, I go, wow, if I thought I was pretty squared away, always studying, always training, always, you know, taking classes, I thought I had a handle on, you know, what, the baseline of what I was supposed to do for my job. Right. But these things still happen. And I said, I went through a top-notch fire academy program. I'm in a good fire department, busy companies. I had a great mentor. Um, my ladder company driver who was, was fantastic, was an outstanding mentor for me. I go, where was the disconnect? So as he's going through this information, I said, this is it. We're not connecting the tactics with fire behavior. Mm -hmm. And that was, to me, that was the biggest issue. I was like, I have to get this information, make it digestible for the right. average firefighter, and put it out. So when I first got promoted, I, was, uh, I did a brief stint in, uh, as, a, as the department safety officer. So I had some opportunity to develop curriculum. And that's what I did at the tail end, was I built this program not to go anywhere outside of my department. And I sent it to another colleague in the state to, uh, for peer review and just said, hey, can you take a look at this before I go and deliver it to my department as a brand new company officer? So he comes back with me and said, hey, this, you've got some good stuff here. If you yeah. keep developing this, why don't you write an article on it and then you know, try submitting it to FDIC? I was like, come on. I'm a brand new lieutenant. I got, at this time, I had less than 10 years on, on my, my current department. I said, all right, that all sells, sounds well and good. So I kept developing the program. I, re, I did write an article on it. It got published in the magazine. And lo and behold, the proposals came through for FDIC. I submitted and the rest was history. And yeah. the thing is just kind of snowballed from there. And I just want to say, like one of the things that I love about your, your program, when we were, we, we were up at it in May, and, I, and I'm really excited for people to get it here tonight, you talked about those um, studies from UL that were done mm -hmm. on Governor's Island, and a lot of times people take those studies and they really manipulate it into something that it's Absolutely. not supposed to be. And there's a lot of misinformation. I think we, we were kind of touching on it before, but like I chuckled when you said you were a safety officer because there's a lot of Facebook safety officers that are out there. Right. And <laughs> breathe in. We talked about it. <laughs> Let it out. Um, <laughs> but it was really cool to have you take that information and put it into a format that I was like, now this makes sense. The thing people need to realize, because I'm, in, I'm involved with the latest uh, fire attack study, the co uh, coordinated fire attack study for UL, mm -hmm. the thing that people need to realize is that the research is fluid. And the, 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 the way it's formatted, UL gets funding from the federal government to perform their tests. Yeah. They have a scope for, their, for each individual study, so they can only study one thing at a time, and they have to conclude one study before they can move on to the next. So it, and they it takes a great deal of time to, to, to one, prepare, conduct, and then assess all of the data. Right. And then it's the committee's uh, responsibility to read through all of the data and then come up with tactical recommendations. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people think that, you know, they got together for a week and I was like, hey, Jason, what are you yeah. doing? Uh, well, I was going to do some videos. Let's light a house on fire. We'll set up some right. cameras and we'll take a temperature reading and then we'll call it. Like it's, it's a lot. Why am I associated with not doing things the right way? That's exactly what just happened there. Like, well, yeah, no, that's, no, right. that's, <laughs> that's true. Right. Actually, I wanted to like real fast go back on what you said, uh, making things digestible for people. Mm -hmm. That is that is a huge that's a huge thing to me. I own a, a comedy CPR company, so mm -hmm. it's same CPR certification as everyone else, but mine's a stand up comedy routine, and it's really really good for like lay rescuers and stuff because the average person doesn't want to hear all the numbers and stuff like that. So when you say digestible, that's that's when I go to a class or any kind of class, and the person makes the the stuff digestible. It's interesting. It's it, they're not using monstrously huge words that mm -hmm. no one actually understands. Yeah. I mean that's what firefighters and firemen want to hear they want they want to hear stuff that relates to them so i think that's awesome that 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 you're doing that because a lot of people don't do that anymore they want to go to the extreme right. other side it's like no make it to where i understand it it's good for me because then i'm able to utilize it more in my career so i like that are you gonna have uh like i know we were on a little bit of a time constraint but do you have the video tonight of uh like when we were up in maine the guy said hey that was my relative who was in that fire uh i'm not i, I believe that's in there because I, I had to, to reformat the program to fit the time slot for tonight so if it comes out but like there was this really cool video that we came across and it was one of the, like talk about things being digestible like the room got it to begin with but then there's this like wild card in the audience who had a family member who was actually 
at that fire on that crew. Wow. Oh yeah, that, and, that video is in there. I thought you right. meant the Jersey one. Yeah. No, no, yeah, the other, and uh, and it really kind of like I don't want to say it hit home, but it really wrapped it up, and everyone's like. Like it was just kind of cool to see the buy-in at the end yeah, of the Yeah, it was. So. It, it was pr- one of the, the the cooler moments I've had. Uh, you know, presenting was uh, this guy. All of a sudden, you hear some some commotion in the back, and, <laughs> and he I, looks up. He's like, "Who's and talking?" I look, and I looked up, and I'm like, "What's what's up, guys?" And and he goes, "That's my old man." And he kind of, yeah, you know, he kind of got taken back a little bit because uh, I don't think his uh, his father's with us anymore. No, um, he, he has since passed. So for him, it kind of to hear his dad's voice. Uh, wow. Yeah. And he didn't Jeez. expect it. It kind of took him took him by yeah. surprise. And you know, you can see the the pride in, in him yeah. as he's talking about his father. And um, you know, he was wearing. It was v- very cool. One of the things that he shared with me afterwards, after the class was over, he was wearing a a, a brass bracelet, and it had. Two Maltese cro- crosses with um, with a seven and a one fifty five on it, and it was his dad's companies as a private and as a company uh, officer. And the his dad was actually one of the the crew that responded at the the twenty third Street the Wonder Drugstore fire, where it was him and one other guy were the only guys that went back on the rig wow. after the fire was left over because the, yeah. almost their entire crew had gotten wiped out during that fire. Oh. So he was one of, one of only two survivors of his company. And the, the bracelet that he was wearing was made out of the brass from the pole from their, original, their firehouse. Wow. So it was pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, just the, the stories that you hear. And, yeah. Uh, that was probably mm-hmm. one of the... That's the thing I love the most about going around and presenting and sharing information with people is the breakout sessions at the, on the breaks in, yeah. uh, after and before when you go to the bar afterwards. Yes. Those are some of the best conversations. 100%. Some of the best nuggets and pearls of wisdom that mm-hmm. you pick up from people are typically not in class. Yes. Um, and that's where I kind of tried to steer this program as much as I could is all the, those little pearls of wisdom that I've picked up from other instructors, from guys, uh, guys on my job, uh, from cl- other classes I've taken, from things that I've read, and comp- compile it into a basically a, a framework. So no matter if you work in Harlem or you work in the most rural town in the Northeast or, or on the other side of the country, yeah, these are universal principles that you're going to be able to apply. So, you know, he, my hope is that you can go home to Florida and take what you've picked up from a guy from the Northeast and be able to take and at least apply some of what you, yeah. you've learned to your community. No, and that's absolutely. the whole point because I think a lot of people have, um, have gripes about seminars like this because especially in this part of the country where you have a lot of major metro departments, there, there's that, that stigma that when you get a, a bigger city guy that comes in, they, talk, they, they tend to talk about their tactics. Yeah. Right. Um, and for, for mo- most of the, the, the country, Mm-hmm. That run, th- you know, three-person companies, or sometimes even less than that, and they struggle to a- accomplish just the baseline objectives of fire attack and search. So they don't have the luxury of personnel and resources that the major metros do. So I think I kind of uh, can relate to a, a larger populace of, of people that are coming to seminars, where you know we're decently staffed, but. You know, for our for our community, but we're we're a small department. I mean, there's right. there's no 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 two ways about it. Uh, so, for me to be able to take that information and make it one digestible and two practical for the vast majority of people that are coming in, even if it's only a couple of, of nuggets or, or pieces of information that they can take on, yeah. then that's a win because that's what this 100%. is all about. This is all about bettering each other and pa- passing and sharing information. So we can be better at what we do, yes. and, and I think yeah. I think the bettering each other is a huge thing, because I think in today's age with social media and everything, like the constant, the, the the thing that's not variable is that there's always the social media police out there. There's always sure. the safety officer, like you said. There's always yeah. there's always somebody downing each other, and I think you know what you're doing is you're spreading the good word, and like you said, you're able if you can relate to more than just you know. I've, I've said this about, I'm not going to name any big cities, but big city people do always come in and they're like, wow, this is what we do and this is why, because we're the best, like this is the way we right. do it. So if you're able to apply the things that you're mm-hmm. saying to, I mean, my department, I have 80 guys, that's it. We have 80 guys, we we run, uh, it's normally uh, four people, two two on the uh, ambulance and then two on the on the suppression unit, stuff like that. So no, I, I like it, man. I think spreading positivity, spreading 
good knowledge. That's the way we should be moving, not in the reverse direction of constantly beating down. Like you come out with a new technique instead of people going, hey, let me try this. Let me see what this looks like. And, and doing that instead of just like beating it down. Well, nah, this could be better this way, this way. No, how about you try it out? It could be the legitimately the, the technique that saves your crew's life. So yeah. I love it, man. So the, 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 the big thing is, uh, I try to be very diligent about uh, citing my sources. Yes. Because the, the the one thing about the program is is it's I'm not teaching anybody. I'm sharing information, information that has been passed along to me, or lessons that I've learned the hard way, or just things that I've picked up. That's what this is all about. It's not. I'm not teaching you. I'm sharing with you. I'm providing you within with with some information that I, that I've picked up or. or you know, things that I have that I th- that, that I think are, are important, mm-hmm. you know, because that's the whole point of this class is that if somebody could take something that I had to learn the hard way and then recognize it out in the field a day, a couple, a month or a year later and say, oh, wow, that was that same situation. I need to make sure I do this or don't do this. Yes. And it's prevent somebody from getting jammed up. Yeah. Then uh, I like the way you say it. Not all that matters. I always say every, I'm a field training officer for all the new guys that come onto my department. And I always tell them like, no matter what kind of schooling you went through, you're not a good medic or you're not a good firefighter until you have some experience. So th- this kind of stuff is very important for, y- for brand new guys, younger guys and younger in their career. So like you said, you're not teaching them, but you're, you're explaining your uh, experience that you've had so they don't make those same mistakes. Right. We do learn from our mistakes, but that's, that's exactly the way it should be yep. done. Yeah. I like it, man. I mean, you, we're going to take a break short Yeah, we're, 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 we're going to, We'll take a break now. If you're, yep. yeah, and we'll yeah. Uh, we'll come back to this in a little bit. But everybody that's out there, thanks for tuning in live. Yes. And uh, there's Jeremy. He's uh, you're on this one. The, they can see you on this one over here. Good look yeah. to your right. You gotta look into that one right there. There you go. The one he's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see All you right. back in here a little bit. We'll see you guys back in here a little bit. Nick, thank you.